Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I'm going to have a go at repotting my um, English beech. Uh, I should have repotted this last spring, but I missed my chance. And quite honestly, I've nearly missed my chance again. Best time to repot deciduous trees is as the buds start to swell, not after they've opened. <laughs> I've left this one. It's probably only a matter of days, but I'd like to have got at it a little bit earlier before that greenery showed up. But um, there's still quite a lot of buds that haven't opened, so hopefully I've caught it in time. Now I gave this a light prune last year, hoping to encourage back budding to thicken up the branches, which on English beach yeah, is not often achieved. They tend to push out, each bud tends to push out three leaves that push and extend um, sometimes you get five and then you may get some more extensions later in the year but that tends to be its growth pattern you don't tend to get much more than that and you normally only get that one flush of greenery in the spring and then those bits grow on it doesn't tend to have a second flush of buds so what i've actually achieved is not bad at all for a beach i've got back budding on this branch um, I've got one single back bud there and bits that I thought were dead have actually shot out. This one hasn't done much back budding at all, which is a pity because it is a main branch. But I've got one here and a possible there. I'm not sure whether that's going to grow. But this one's done quite well and pushed back to here and another one here. And then this one has done exceptionally well and pushed out quite a few buds much farther back down the branch. Um, so that's not bad at all. So it's going to have quite a bit of growth this year and this hasn't been repotted for a very, very long time. So I'm not leaving it another year. So I'll uh, get my um, tools of torture and make a start on the pot. Um, if, it deems, if it's deemed to be far too messy to be doing indoors, then I'll actually clean the roots off and everything outside where I can make a mess and not worry about it and then bring it back in to uh, set it up in a new pot. I'm not sure whether I've got another pot that's going to be suitable so it might even be going back in this, um, well it's a cheap plastic training pot basically, but um, yeah we'll see how we go. Okay I've got my instruments of torture, most of which I'm not going to actually need come to think of it but uh, <laughs> I'm not pruning the tree today um, I'm just going to leave it as is and just see what grows well and what doesn't um, so we'll give this a go but I've got a horrible feeling as soon as I start trying to get this dirt out of the pot we're going to make such a mess that I'm going to end up stopping and going outside to finish off uh, we'll see what we can do <laughs> let's dip the end in the coffee why don't I <laughs> This is wired in, so first job, get the old wires off. Get some wildlife in here as well, the eight-legged variety. Luckily it's only a little one, because the bigger ones don't last long. Not my favourite creatures on the planet, I must admit. Which is totally psychological, they do no flipping harm at all. They're marvellous things to have around, but uh, I just don't like them. That's just the way it is. Well, it came out easy, and we have wildlife in there as well, as expected. A couple of woodlice. Sorry, ex-woodlice. Let's see what else we got. Do you know what, if it wasn't for the age of this media, I wouldn't repot this. Woodlouse. Can't help them getting in the pot. But, uh, yeah, this has got a lot of new root growth at the moment, right round the edge. And to try and repot this, these are going to get damaged. I think what I might try and do is um, just tease the soil out here in the center and then see if I can gently wash this off um, I, mean, I certainly don't I don't want all this moss and everything on the top and weeds 
media is still incredibly wet. I was hoping it was going to be a bit drier than this. This is uh, it's effectively mud. But it's so compacted after all this time and lifeless. You know, there wouldn't be any sort of nutritional value in this media whatsoever. It's been this has been in this pot a long time. I want to get it in some fresh media, but I don't know how easy it's going to be. You know, we've got slugs in here as well. Yep, I'm going to go outside. There's a lot of wildlife in the base of there. There's slugs, there's woodlice. They just get in through the holes in the bottom, and it's a lovely place for them to be. They, they actually love it, because it's nice and damp and dark. But yeah, I'm going to uh, attack that outside, and then I'll come back in. And while I'm out, in the sh out there, I can have a look in the shed and see if I've got a, a different pot. Once I know what size pot I'm going to need, because at the moment I don't. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll make the mess outside and then come back in. Right, so it's got the worst of the old media out. And it's not a bad root system. It's not as uh, fine as I would have liked. But then the only way you can get a nice fine root system is to cut back the roots. And there's a big long fat one there that's doing absolutely nothing. So that can come off. And that's quite long. But it's got like a, a set of new roots coming out there. So I don't want to go back too far. That one's got life near the top, so that can come back a bit. I don't want to take too much off. As I say, if it had been repotted on a more regular basis, it, uh, it would have a better root system, quite honestly. Well, there's a nice, good, strong tuft of uh, relatively new roots there, so we'll leave those. It's just some of these longer ones can come off. Hopefully they will uh, regenerate some nice uh, fibrous new feeding roots. That's what I'm after. These great long thick things don't do much. They're more geared up to keeping the thing in the pot. It's the feeder roots that are important. And they're the little bits that will branch out from uh, where it's been trimmed. That's about all I'm going to do. I don't want to go mad. As I say, if I leave this a couple of years now and then do it again, the pot is highly, highly liable to be absolutely full of little fine feeder roots, um, which is what I want. Right, so that will do for the trimming. Um, just have a little bit of a clean up. I've found another pot, so we'll, uh, we'll have a go at getting it in a pot. Okay. Um, I found a quite a nice pot and it's a bit big but you know given the choice of it sitting in that for the next couple of years or sitting in that it's going in this even though that is too big I'm not going to show the tree at the end of the day this is for my enjoyment in the back garden um, I mean that would get knocked down straight away if that went in the show because the tree is just nowhere near big enough to warrant a pot that big but as I don't go to shows anymore it doesn't matter to me um, these little things, they're just pieces of mesh with little butterfly clips on and um, unfortunately this pot has only got two drainage holes which um, poses a problem. Not for drainage, <laughs> I'll show you. Let's just get my two little, two little clips in first. They just poke through there like that, pull them down nice and tight and then just bend the other end over like that. It just holds it in place and stops your media falling out the holes and stops some of the wildlife crawling in through the holes. But um, on that front, it's normally a miserable failure. Right, This is the problem when you've only got two drainage holes. I need some wire to hold the tree tight into the pot and stop it wobbling around. And when you've only got two holes, it doesn't work very well. Um, if you had four, then you can put your wires sort of like that, or like that, and then like that. But when you've only got two holes, that's all you've got to pull against is the two holes. So it does make life a little difficult 
trying to find a place to pull on the tree and hold it in the pot nice and tight. Come on, get in there. Yeah, but um, classic mistake is forgetting to do this before you put the media in. <laughs> I've never done that, of course. Never, never forgotten to put my wire in. <laughs> I've done it often enough that I doubt if I'll ever do it again, but um, I bet if I was doing quite a few at once I might, you know, because you get sort of, uh, you want to get a move on and um, hurrying leads to uh, mistakes. Right. That'll do. It's got those in place and then all I'm doing now is um, bending them outwards towards what would be four nice corners if I had four corners but uh, you know what I mean I'm just getting the wires out of the way basically right I'm just going to put some uh, grit over the top of the uh, drainage holes if I had a lot of grit I'd probably put a layer over the hole at the bottom of the pot in fact I might do that the only, the only thing this grit's going to get used for now is top dressing. And quite honestly, drainage in the bottom of the pot is more important than it looking pretty at the top. So I will actually put a layer on. It just means when it's pouring with rain, for days on end, which never happens in the UK of course, we don't ever get periods like that where it just rains and rains and rains. And then it rains again. We don't get periods like that. So, uh, but when we do, <laughs> it pays to be able to let the water out and not get the whole of the root mass totally soggy. Right, now, have I got a front and a back to the pot? I think it's actually uniform all the way round. But this is the time where if you see any chips or blemishes, they can go around the back. And there is a slight run in the glaze. Where is it? That was in there somewhere, I saw it. So that can be the back of the pot. Next thing we need to do is find out. Oh. See, quite honestly, this tree looks better from that side, but that's where the trunk was cut, which is, although that's healed over nicely, it's still rather ugly, shall we say. So I'm still gonna put that round the back. And, um, get some media underneath there before we plonk the tree down so all the re roots at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the uh, root ball have got something to get straight into so all I'm going to do is make a mound in the middle to sit the plant on which I will then pull down on hard I'll, uh, make sure we've got some media my worry is I'm going to run out of media before I finish this because um, <laughs> it's going to be difficult getting some more because I'm nearly out. I'm certainly out of the grit that I mix in. A mound in the middle. Now let's see how that sits. No, it's going to have to go the other way round despite that um, cut in the trunk. It's just the way the branches are placed. Um, you know, these two first branches are almost opposite, which is not ideal. Um, yeah, I, ne I need them facing forward slightly. Um, it's just gonna look wrong. And quite honestly, once the leaves come out, I won't be able to see that bit of the trunk, so it's not the end of the world. And I want the tree to tip slightly forward this time. It's, it's got some form to it, but um, it lends itself to just leaning forward very slightly. Just checking that all the roots will go down into the media. And the position of the actual trunk is relatively central. And I'm going to offset it very slightly. It's sitting slightly on, on the side of a hill. Somewhere like that. Right, I'll get some media in round the base before I pull the wire tight. That way it pulls onto the media. 
if you see what I mean, rather than um, just pulling onto air. You don't want air in underneath it, that's for sure. some decent sturdy root bases to actually pull those wires against. thing's going to flip and move. As soon as I pull the wires, it'll all move anyway. Right, now that was the idea of offsetting the wires, is that now I can put the wires across, but it would have been much easier to do if there were four drainage holes. much easier if you've got too much wire and cut some off than to have too little and can't get your twisting. So I would rather have too much and waste a little bit. It's only a tiny bit of wire. It's only the end of the world. Pull that tight. Give it a twist. And then get it going with the pliers. Which are, uh, obviously can exert more pressure than my little fingers. twisting it up tight yet because I haven't got the other wire on and um, I need to see where that one's going to go to. Now, should I go over the top of that big root? I think I will. The reason I'm going over the top of that one is it is the most sturdy place to pull and I do want the tree slightly tipping that way. coffee job this one. <laughs> one outside while I was uh, trying to get the thing separated from the media which took a bit of doing. Quite a lot of effort that was. Lots of scritchy scratching and stuff. And lots of mess too. <coughs> so that the majority of it is going to be below the media. Not all of it, but most of it. I can give this one another tug. This would help if I twisted it the right way, wouldn't it? Instead of untwisting it. Now all we've got to do is bury the roots. Those that are still
still not buried. Right, where's me dirt? Oh, I'm not going to have enough, I know I'm not. <laughs> we'll see how far we get. We'll see how far we get. So I'm not going to need any more here, but um, you'd be surprised. You start poking it down and getting it all in between the roots and getting it nice and firm, and suddenly you've got a lot more room to put some more in. And if there's room to put some more in, you need to put some more in. Obviously, the more you've got for the roots to grow into, the better the root system you'll have. And it needs to be quite firm. You could imagine a seedling tree, you know, in the forest, and it manages to get a hold. The first thing it'll probably do is chuck a big fat root straight down in as deep as it can get. That should stop it blowing over in the wind. And then it will start branching out and spreading. And what sort of media would it be growing in in the forest? Would it be all loose and floppy? Chances are it wouldn't. Chances are it's been there for a few hundred years and it's well compacted. And the roots will just burrow their way into it and hold the tree firm. That's, that's the goal, is to you know, make sure the tree is incredibly firm. Right at the side, do you know, these leaves I believe are growing while I'm doing this. I'm sure that has opened up <laughs> since I started this morning. I think I might just about have enough. I've only got one more bonsai tree to repot this spring. And it's one that I meant to sell last year and I didn't get round to taking the photos. Um, I mean, I trimmed it, it's a, it's a nice twin trunk. I trimmed it and everything and got it ready to sell and then just got caught up with other things and it just got forgot. And um, in my book, it's although it's nice to see trees without their leaves on, to see their shape and their form, that's not a good way to try and sell them because what's the difference between a deciduous tree that's dropped its leaves in autumn and a dead one? <laughs> so if I'm buying a tree, I want to see it. I want to see it alive. I want to see green leaves. So the best time to sell them is obviously when they're in leaf. Then you, or at least when the buds are open. That way you can sort of say my tree is alive. Right, just about enough meat. Right, I'm just going to rinse my hands a second. And then we'll top dress that. I've just about got enough grit to put some grit over the top. I've even got some grit in my coffee. Uh, towel. Dry hands for this bit. And then luckily I'm not going to have to water this because it's going to chuck it down outside any minute. So it can get watered in nicely with rain. Now this serves two purposes. It helps stop weeds. <laughs> I only say helps because it doesn't stop the flipping things but it helps. And also it stops the slugs and the stales getting up the trunk because they won't crawl on that. If they want to do aerobatics, you know, and swing across uh, things that are nearby and get onto the leaves, well so be it. But this really does stop them getting up the trunk and getting onto the delicate new green stuff and it looks quite pretty too it sets the tree off in theory it might stop moss growing but personally I quite like moss that'll do just need some watering in which I said uh, like I said I think the, the rain is going to do that right I'll just take the oh, I wonder if I can move that just uh, a fraction. I just want it leaning forward just a fraction more. You gonna stay there? Yeah, jolly good. Yeah, that's better. I'll just take the camera off the tripod a second. So that's it then. Slightly offset from center. Um, to me, they don't look right stuck absolutely dead center. I always like them set slightly back 
and slightly to one side or the other. Yeah, that, that's just me, that's how I like to see them coming out of the top of the pot. And um, quite honestly, the way it was potted before, it didn't look right. Now, although it doesn't look wonderful now, it's not the best bonsai in the world, it looks more in keeping. Now, this branch is very linear. Yeah, it's a bit two-dimensional that way. It would be much better if it could spread out but I'm not going to do anything with that this year. Um, this one has got buds pushing out sideways, so this one will widen. Um, both of these were taken back last year. This one, um, <laughs> under normal circumstances, I would take this bit off, because it's poking me in the eye, so to speak. But that's going to do a wonderful job at cover covering up that scar on the trunk. This one's got buds coming out which I'm going to lead by daylight basically so these buds that are sticking up in the air I want to come this way towards me and bring this branch round here a bit. This one needs to go that way so I may just take that lead off but at the moment all I want to do is get it to grow and open these leaves up and see what it's going to do next. Then I'll have a think about where the dominant growth is do I want to keep that dominant growth or take it back and put the energy into other lesser dominant growths? But I'm not doing it at the moment. I just want to let that settle into its uh, new media, get the new feeder roots going again and um, just basically get some energy back into this tree. But already this, where the growth is and where the buds are opening, is a lot lot better than it was last spring so um, it, you know the all my bonsai were badly neglected I'm you know I'm slowly but surely getting them back um, but it does take time it always takes more than one year um, the idea is you prune medium get back budding let that grow on and then the following year prune a bit harder back to where that back budding is and you regenerate your branches closer to the trunk. But um, I think once that comes into full leaf that's going to look quite nice. Um, as I say, when I collected this it was from a demolition site and the guys were pulling the house down at the time. <laughs> and this was basically by the gate. and. Um, I just went up to the guys, I said, are you clearing the garden out as well? He said, well, we are levelling the site. I said, well, do you mind if I take that tree away next to the gate? And they looked at me a bit blank as, you know, why would you want that? But just said, well, yeah, it's, it's all going to get bulldozed, so take it away. And when I collected this, it was 12 foot tall. It was like a, <laughs> a giant stick. <laughs> But it had signs of branches low enough on that trunk for me to be able to take that trunk off, which is what you can see I did. It had these few little twiglets sticking out the side, and then it had one reasonable branch here. So I basically took the trunk off and allowed that branch, which then split into two, to grow to become like, you know, the new trunk which over time, you know, this will blend in and um, as I say, with a few leaves, it leaves in front of it, it's not such a, a prominent cut but um, it's certainly healed over nicely, calloused over nicely so uh, yeah, so that's where it came from, that's what I did to get it and um, yeah, I, I always draw the line at um, you shouldn't be out in the wild collecting trees, they don't belong to you yeah, it doesn't matter where they are, they can be on the side of a flipping mountain. They belong to somebody, even if it's the crown, you know. And this, luckily, was on private land. You know, the developers were there, and they said, yep, yeah, that's okay. So, uh, you know, I don't agree with taking things from the wild, because they're for everybody. Not, not just for you to take home, if you see what I mean, so I'm not too keen on that sort of thing. There are places where, I know a mountainside in Wales, where that whole mountainside, a bonsai society, has got permission to take what they want. So that's fine. Permission granted. And there's some gorgeous 
trees have come off of that mountainside. <laughs> some gorgeous junipers and some pines, so that's good stuff, but uh, yeah, with permission. Anyway, that's that one done. One more to go. Um, the buds are only just starting to move on that one, so I've got time to sort out some more media because as I said I've run out I'll have to mix up some more from somewhere I'm sure there's a bag of compost or something in the shed if I dig in there amongst the spiders anyway that's another one done let's get it out in the rain and give it a good soaking <laughs>